Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and in this video we are going to talk about MDS. And I will actually assume that you already have like CCSA knowledge or above, so if you haven't checked my CCSA course, please feel free to check it here on YouTube, it's, it's free, so why not? So before we go into MDS, we're actually going to go back in time a bit. So if we're checking out the normal smart center with R77 or actually below R80, then you can still have in checkpoint you can have multiple gateways so you can have several gateways you can have multiple uh, clusters and they can have different functions and you can still have this in one single management station and when i say multiple you can have hundreds of gateways if you want to and if your management server is not strong enough for it you can divide up the functions so you can have separate log servers and separate smart event servers so this way it scales really big but one of the issues or the main issues when it comes to R77 and below was that you can only have one admin working in the policy at the same time. So even if you group stuff together, like you group these two firewalls and you can push one policy to this one. So let's say this is your data centers. Well, you can still only have one admin that working on that policy and even if you have multiple policies you can only have one logged in admin at the time with read write access the rest of the of the admins will have read only and that doesn't give well that doesn't help you with changes it helps you with troubleshooting because they can reach the logs and so on but even if you group stuff together so let's see here you have one policy for these two gateways and you have another policy for this one you're still limited to one admin that makes changes, even if you have several policies and even if you have hundreds of gateways. So one way to solve this before R80 came was to actually split this up in different multi-domains or you have one MDS, one multi-domain server or system. I don't know what it stands for. Maybe I should have uh, checked that up before I did this video, but MDS or provider one. Provider 1 was what this was called before. So one MDS can handle one or more gateways. So this way you have two CMAs or two domains. Checkpoint has changed name of this so many times I don't even know what to call them anymore. I call them CMA and that's the old name. I guess the new name is domain. But Checkpoint will know what you talk about if you say CMA. So here you have two CMAs. This means that you can have two dashboards in parallel open. So two working administrators working in separate dashboards, but each of these CMAs, they controlling separate gateways. So the green CMA controls this cluster and the blue CMA controls these two clusters. But this was a great way to actually have multiple admins and for a large organization where you have a lot of changes occurring on a daily basis, this was a great way to actually achieve multiple admins so you can separate like uh, the different parts of the world. So you have EMEA, Americas and uh, Asia. So you have three different uh, CMAs controlling three different parts of the world. Or you can have like one for office networks, one for remote uh, offices, one for data center, one for stage, one for whatever you want. And this was enough reason for many corporations or large corporations to actually go for an MDS solution. These corporations that don't actually need or they, they don't need like an MDS, full blown MDS with everything that is included in this and only needs the the multiple admins to be able to work at the same time. I mean, they can do just fine in a management station running R80. So there are more things within MDS than only multiple admins. And we will come to that later. And uh, But this is one big reason. And I guess the main reason for many corporations to actually run MDS back in the days. And of course, you can separate your logs to different log servers, depending on which CLM you're using. So in this case, the CMA1 is uh, matching to CLM1. And I don't remember the, the new name for it. If you call it CL CLM, Shakepoint will know what you're talking about. I mean, MDS is, uh, 
MDS is great, <laughs> but they're changing too many names and there are some caveats with MDS as well. But um, that's not for the introduction video. So this is a view on, on how MDS did look in R77. And I guess some of you maybe still have R77 or below, but R77 is no longer supported. So make sure to upgrade to R80. Uh, there are actually assistance you can get from Checkpoint doing uh, like upgrade service and so on. But you see here, you have six domains. So each of these ones, they are different domains. I don't know if this is visible on the, on the video. Maybe I should have marked it with a pen. Hold on. So each of these ones, here you have one domain. Here you have one, 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 one and one so in total you have six domains one two three four and five and six so that's the domains and within the domains you have a lot of gateways and you can have several gateways within within one domain so the scale of this one is quite enormous actually i believe the the limitation based on um, on documentation is like 200 or 250 domains. I mean, in the real world, I wouldn't put more than 100. I myself try to keep them within 75. Um, but you understand the scale of this when you can actually have multiple MDS, you can have HA, you can have multiple log servers, so you can have a huge environment. But the problem when you have a huge environment is upgrade and downgrades and troubleshooting and so on. So I rather split it up and maximum have like 75 domains in each uh, MDS. But that's just my take. Maybe you have a different preference. I don't blame you for that. So R80 introduced the possibilities to have multiple admins. So you can have one or several administrators working within the same management, within the same policy even you just lock your rule you don't change any, anything else uh, and in later version you can even have parallel uh, installing of policies but the biggest change of r80 was the introduction for multiple admins and this is maybe a reason why some companies do no longer go for mds but there are still great benefits of mds especially for service providers this is how the dashboard looks for R80. If you haven't seen it, please check out my CCSA course and I will link it in the description. Well, I guess above and below and yeah. And MDS R80 still have the same functionality as the normal, as the normal management station for R80. So you have the CMAs, CMA one and two within CMA one. You can still have 10 admins working in this. So the only, I mean, you, you gain all the new cool stuff, but you didn't lose anything. I mean, the only drawback of MDS is maybe that it's a bit more complicated and well, the price, um, but that you have to deal with checkpoint. Um, one of the biggest reason, oh wait, you can still have the CLMs and the, the separate loggings. But the reason why companies still go for MDS and especially service providers is the segmentation. So MDS, it is full segmentation to virtual domains. And that means separate databases for both administrators and objects. Meaning that you can have colliding IP address spaces within the domains. So if you want to, for example, have a carbon copy between your production network and your stage network, this is fully possible with the help of MDS. And I would suggest you to use uh, VSX for this. But I mean, you can have 10.10.10.10 uh, .10 in CMA1 and the same IP address in CMA2, and they represent totally different objects. So you can have full segmentation of objects and administrators. So just as a last slide for this introduction is MDS together with VSX. And here is a match made in heaven. I mean, this is absolutely perfect, at least for me. <laughs> so 
MDS, you have the virtualization of the domains, the management station. So they are completely separated. I mean, they are fully multi-tenant. And with VSX, you have completely separated firewalls. I mean, a VSX has its own routing table, it has its own policy, it has its own ARP table. So it's completely separate, also fully multi-tenant. So for a service provider, you can have one domain and one VS per customer. And you don't need to care about the IP addresses that the customer selects because you don't care about it. I mean, it doesn't matter if the customers are using the same name and same IP addresses within their own domains and within their own firewall. You don't need to care. And for a service provider, that's absolutely awesome. So in the coming videos, we will install both MDS and VSX, we will do upgrades, we will do migration, we will actually migrate the existing uh, smart management center, smart, yeah, the existing management that we have in the last lab, we will migrate that into MDS just to show you how this actually works. And we will install a, a VSX and we will build a VPN tunnel between VSX and a normal gateway. And I will actually install the MDS and R8030 so we can have the user def file on the VSX uh, really making and deciding how the VPN should form as in R8040 they have a new function with VPN domains but in R8030 and below this function doesn't exist so you need to use a user def file to actually say how a checkpoint should use their VPN and I'm fully aware this was uh, simplified and a lot of information if you haven't heard VSX and VSX so just just stay tuned I think you will like this series because this is something that I'm really excited about the the normal stuff the normal gateways and the normal management stations not so much I mean I have worked with checkpoint for the last 10 years and I mean maybe the last eight years with VSX and, and MDS. So this is something that I like and um, well, stay tuned and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.